My name's Ben. I'm here to talk to you about blood clots in the early stages. The early stages are the first two weeks of recovery. Those are painful areas and probably you're not going to do much more than get out of bed, uh, maybe make it to the bathroom or somewhere in your house and that's it. You want to spend most of the time in your bed laying down so that you don't pull your blood. Do not sit in chairs and let blood go down pulling your legs. Now, first thing I want to mention, I am not a medical doctor. You need to listen to your medical doctor, but just understand that he cannot approve of these fast-track recovery methods because they are not standard protocol in the physician's uh, book on blood clots. So don't even attempt to ask him, what do you think, doc? Uh, he has to say no by default. Use your own common sense. Trust no one except yourself. Use your own common sense to make the correct decisions. For instance, the other day I was saying, doc, just want you to know, part of my recovery process, I'm drinking a lot of coffee. And he says, what? Gives me that stick eye again and says, you know, that'll constrict your veins, don't you? And now, anybody else, this would have been the, the signal to run. No, I said, Doc, that's exactly what I want. Because I want the veins to become constricted. And when that happens, then the pressure, we call it the head pressure on the venous return, goes up and we can avoid having blood just stagnate and form pools and ulcers and ultimately post thrombotic syndrome. We want the blood to try to be forced on up the leg as far as possible. And when we do that, then we're going to, hopefully we might even get some blood to go under the blood clot, some to go over it, some sideways, around, whatever. But the idea is if we can get blood, uh, the blood clot in contact with flowing blood, then the macrophages, you know, those little Pac-Man critters, they, they can eat up the blood clot. Now, the other uh, flip side of the, the coin is that we want to try to generate uh, mild inflammation in tissues so that that will create uh, hyperinfusion of uh, capillary blood flow into the surface tissues and everywhere, basically allowing a fluid uh, shift. We, we want to move things around. We want to increase the number of uh, uh, capillary veins that can supply macrophages. Uh, a lot of these things are just kind of doing nothing. So we want to wake them up, give them a wake up call. And the idea is that if we can create a mild inflation through uses of cold heat and massage and a couple things, then we're going to avoid the stage for the uh, painful post thrombotic syndrome. Hopefully we'll speed up the recovery by exposing macrophages to your blood clots and so forth. So at least that's my logic. If you don't agree with it, I respect that. and uh, Just use your best judgment on what you can. Now, I do have uh, an IVC filter. It's an inferior vena cava filter. Mine is not a uh, green field. I have a G2 filter. Anything smaller than three millimeters uh, will go through that filter. In fact, I think I had a little tiny uh, blood clot to go through in my lungs the other night. Felt like somebody hit me in the back with a hammer. No big deal because I knew I, after 30 seconds I knew I was still alive, so I just didn't worry about it. Just let the pain go away. So don't fear these things. They are going to happen. You will have little blood clots. But what I'm telling you in this clip, even if I did not have uh, a filter, I would be uh, totally comfortable with doing any of the things I'm telling you now. Okay, let's just get started. You, first thing I want you to know, your doctor is going with the old standard rule book and his rule book says you use compression stockings and walk slowly for the rest of your life and you'll be okay. Don't do anything fast or sudden. Just be careful, fear everything, be cautious. Okay, now the new fast track recovery says, uh, fear nothing, attack. Just pretend I'm your drill instructor and I'm behind you saying, be aggressive, have a positive mental attitude because if your attitude is, I don't think this is going to work, it won't and you shouldn't be here. But if you're willing to have a positive mental attitude and be aggressive, I don't like doing these self-imposed walks every morning that I do, but I do them. Okay, this is a this is war on blood clots because it's a very serious thing. Some people uh, 
don't heal for one to two years. Some people say their clots never go away. Uh, we want to try to get these resolved in half the normal time. Okay, I've showed you your doctor's normal protocol right here. That's everything they, they want you to have to fight your blood clots with. And I can almost guarantee you, uh, shortly you will have post-thrombotic uh, syndrome. Okay, over here I've got my uh, collection of toys that I'm going to give you some aid with. One of the first things you're going to find out is you don't have enough oxygen. As soon as you start walking a little bit, you're breathing hard. And of course, as you can see, uh, I still don't have very much drainage in my upper body because the lymphatics are still blocked up. And just getting, you know, to the bathroom is a chore. And in your early stages, it's a nightmare. Uh, okay, so I want to help you with a few things. To get your oxygen, there are a couple ways I've found that are very effective. Let's say you've just, you know, made your trip downstairs or to the bathroom or something, you come back and it's all you can do to hit the bed before you pass out and you're kind of gasping for air. I found that this little oxygen generating thing, which you can probably rent at a hospital, uh, maybe if you have insurance and pay for it, I just happen to be lucky enough to have a 102 year old parent that had this on hand. And so <laughs> he doesn't have it on hand anymore. I do. But uh, this, this will extract oxygen from the air through a filter of some kind and give you about 20% oxygen. That's one way to do it. And it works great. You know, in about 30 minutes, you'll feel much, much better. The other way is uh, uh, I just uh, happen to have this uh, uh, problem, breathing problem at night. And so I've always had one of these uh, uh, breathing machines here. This is called a CPAP. I don't want to tilt it too much because it's still got water in it. This is a <clears throat> ResMed Escape 2 CPAP. It's the quietest one I've found. The first one I had was pretty noisy and <laughs> my, my wife was, was about ready to kick me out of the house. This one is great. I love it. Uh, everything's pricey. Of course, you know, you have this on, mask and breathe, but this may take uh, a little bit longer than the oxygen machine, but you get the same kind of benefit. So it's a great way to recover quicker and you need that. Just figure you're going to be spending a lot of money on your recovery tools, so uh, don't try to cut corners thinking, well, you know, I won't have to spend any more. You're going to be broke for a while. Stockings, you need several pairs of those, you know, a machine to help you breathe. Uh, make sure you have vet wrap. This is the uh, cloth material, not, not the elastic uh, rubber-like stuff, but cloth. It has Velcro on the end. You can wrap it as hard as tight as you can around your leg. That'll get you out of a bind. Let's say you don't have your compression stockings, whatever, and you've got to uh, go to work or you've got to meet somebody or go to the grocery. This stuff will get you out of the bind. The only problem is you got to figure out a way to keep it fastened at the top. Before I could get out of the grocery, it would be hanging out my ankles. Okay, you are going to be losing electrolytes if you have a diuretic, and I hope you do. I hope you're on a diuretic. Uh, an anticoagulant like uh, Coumadin, and it'd be nice if you've got an inferior vena cava filter in. Some people have those put in uh, way before their operation. Some people uh, have them put in after they get a blood clot. Uh, you will need your uh, specialist advice on that. Take a banana a day. That'll help replenish the uh, potassium that your kidneys are going to excrete. Uh, they don't recapture uh, potassium too well, as I understand. Now, always have a little water bottle with you. That's going to, as long as you can keep water in you, that's going to uh, help you keep pressure on the, uh, the veins and uh, keep that blood flow going. I found that uh, I, was, I was getting into these states of hypoxia in the muscles, and when you don't have enough oxygen going to your muscles, they're screaming, I can't carry you, I can't support you, and they're wanting oxygen. And they're wanting glucose. So it's the old Krebs cycle stuff. You need, uh, at least my wife fell for that. <laughs> uh, you, you need some candy around, maybe a con pie or two, something to drink that you like. And I just uh, mentioned coffee. I like coffee because it will help constrict the veins. Think of a garden hose. If you've got a garden hose and the nozzle is wide open, the water just kind of jumps down barely out of the holes. Tighten down the nozzle. It's like constricting your veins with coffee. 
water goes way on up, doesn't it? Well, that's what we want our, our veins to do, constrict and put a higher pressure and force the blood anywhere, but allowing it to pull up in the, the, the veins and create other ulcers and everything. We don't want that. You might have uh, an inhaler. I don't have asthma, really, but I find that occasionally the inhaler does open up the lungs a little bit and give me some relief. Uh, one of the very important things I want to mention is cane. We all know we use cane for walking and everything, but the most, <laughs> for me, the, the best thing about the cane is when you hit that point where suddenly you realize you're not near any place where you can sit down and, and you're starting to get a little dizzy, put both hands here and just lean on it. That will get you out of a bind. I take this all the time on every walk I go. Don't need it when I start out, but I guarantee you by the time I'm done, I'm going into that dizzy state and it's kind of a battle. Am I going to make it back <laughs> to the house in time? But I got this here as a tool. We'll talk more about that later. Okay, the other thing we mentioned using uh, hot and cold. Uh, we want to create uh, uh, mild inflammation. Get you one of these ice packs like this. This is called uh, some kind of bottle type ice pack. I don't know. Find it on the internet. They're not much. Maybe about eleven twelve dollars something like that and get the largest size you can because i mean this is like a i don't know a four quart size or something but you would have thought it would have been a pint size so you need a large size the larger the better and what you're going to do is you're going to at night lay down with of course without anything on and you're going to lay this right over the femoral vein or wherever your clot is you know i don't know where it is, wherever it is and uh, the first few seconds, it's, it's going to kill you. The coldness is going to hurt, but you'll get used to that. Leave it there for maybe 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, watch TV or something. Okay, what I want to have happen is I want you to notice your leg, that area where this is, turning bright red. Now, don't let it go to where your leg's turning black or something. Just bright red. That means it's... It's telling the body to send out a lot of extra blood into the capillaries and everything, bringing oxygen into the tissues, creating a compartmental shift so that we don't have uh, blood stasis, and we're bringing macrophages around to everybody's doorstep, looking for blood clots and everything. By the way, when you make up the fluid here, it's not just water you put in there. Uh, make it about 95% water and the other 5% salt. That forms a brine solution that won't freeze and you want to have it very, very cold, but not a block of ice. You want to be able to kind of mold around your leg. And, you know, if, if everything just seems like it's getting you down, just know that it isn't really that hard. In fact, that was easy. <laughs> kind of funny, wasn't it? No, it's kind of stupid, I guess. But anyway, uh, got to make a little humor and everything. I want to ask you, please send in any ideas that you have, that you've learned, uh, experiences you've learned, and you've got things that uh, can benefit other people. Maybe something didn't work. We need to know that or it did work. At some point, I want to make a clip and share these with everybody. I hope this helps. Look forward to the next clip. Thank you, and bye-bye.